Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse. It is Saturday, July 30th, and today we're talking about goldfinches and then some of the other baby birds you might be seeing in your yard, some of the insects that are out there. As always, we would love to know what kind of things you're seeing in your backyard. You can put those in the comments. If you have any questions, you can put those in there as well. Some of the things people are reporting right now are still some Orioles in backyards, especially the babies coming to eat the jelly. Some people are still getting them eating the mealworms, which is pretty neat. Um, hummingbirds, people have been getting more hummingbirds now. So it could be that they've had their young and the young are starting to go out there and go out into the world. So you might be seeing some of them at your feeders as well. And the monarch butterflies, we've heard a little bit of uh, of some action of monarch butterflies, but not that much. So I'm curious what you guys are seeing out there, if you've seen any monarch butterflies, especially. No, I haven't gotten a single one in my yard. Um, so I'm curious about you guys. So you can put those in the comments as well. Um, but let's get started talking about the goldfinch. So um, there are different species of goldfinch in the U.S., but we're talking today about the American goldfinch. And here is a picture of the male and the female. And the American goldfinch is kind of different from most birds in the way where it eats seeds almost exclusively. So a lot of birds will switch their diets to something uh, more of insect based in the spring and in the summer months when there's more insects out there. A lot of birds will feed their young insects, but American goldfinch eat almost exclusively seeds. So their diet at all, like most birds do. They have unpredictable migration. They do move around quite a bit, but there's really no rhyme or reason to when or why. Um, but they do flock around searching for reliable food sources and they may up, they can fly up to five miles around a day. So they can travel quite a long distance to look for food. They're found all across the U.S., almost uh, completely through the United States. And they have different types of calls, but one that you might hear the most often when they're in flight is their potato chip call, where it sounds like they're saying potato chip. Um, I do have a copy of it here, so you can kind of hear um, the potato chip call, and then I'll play you some of their other calls as well. They, they tend to have a really sing-songy voice. So here's some of their little chirps. And here's their potato chip call. So it sounds like, almost like they're saying potato chip. And this tends to be when they're in flight. If you've been getting goldfinches in your yard right now uh, and they're singing, I know mine are just kind of sitting by the feeder and singing and singing and singing. They tend to have a very uh, sing-songy song. And here's some versions of their call. So they can be quite variable, kind of like your house finch, how um, they tend to do a lot of singing as well, but it's not in the same pattern. Same with uh, goldfinches. They will sing a lot, but it's not necessarily the same song over and over and over again. Um, goldfinches are also different from most birds where they, in the, the way that they molt two times a year. So most birds molt one time a year, usually before migration in the spring, before they make their migration further north, they will molt into their breeding plumage. But um, goldfinches will do that, but then they also molt again in the fall. So in the winter, while we do have goldfinches here all winter long, they will not be bright, bright gold. Instead, this is what they look like in the winter. They're more of a drab yellow, kind of an olive color. So they do molt their feathers twice a year, which is kind of rare for, for songbirds. They also have what's called undulating flight, kind of like a woodpecker. If you think of when you're watching it fly, they kind of dip down. And so they kind of do like a bit of a weave when they are flying. So that's called undulating flight where they kind of bounce down, bounce back up, bounce down, bounce back up. And when they're flying like this, that's usually when you hear them doing that potato chip type call. So they can have one to two 
broods a year. Um, most of the time it is one brood a year. And right now is when that is happening. Um, this is a what a typical goldfinch nest looks like. The female will build the nest exclu almost exclusively. Sometimes the male will bring some nesting material, but in general, she will exclusively build the nest. And she builds it using plant fibers, spider webs, and down from thistle and other plants like milkweed, that kind of thing. So they'll weave that all together and then usually use something like spider webs or silk or caterpillar silk, something like that, to kind of stick it all together. The nest construction can take anywhere from four to 10 days. And the nest is usually about three to seven feet above the ground. So goldfinches don't nest in houses. So there's no such thing as a goldfinch house, but they will nest in trees or in shrubs, you know, anywhere from three to seven feet off the ground. They will also have anywhere from three to seven eggs, which are pale blue in color. So they're small and pale blue. There's no kind of speckling on them. And they'll sit on that nest for about a little under two weeks. So anywhere between 10 and 12 days usually is their incubation time. And after that, the young will hatch out of the eggs and they'll be in that nest for a couple weeks for anywhere between 11 and 15 days. So not very long at all. And then they are out into the world. And here's a picture that was just sent in by Chris who says, thought I'd share a recent photo of a goldfinch gathering nesting materials from one of your nest balls. So we do sell these nesting balls here that the goldfinches absolutely love. And it's all natural cotton and they really will build a very fluffy cup type of nest. And so you can kind of entice them sometimes to nest closer to you or in your backyard if you provide some nesting material. Um, so we do still have some of these nesting balls in stock if you're looking for a way to give your goldfinches a little bit something in your backyard. Um, here's a photo sent in uh, by Bob of a goldfinch. This is where you can find them around now if you do have any kind of thistle or any kind of plants that are going to seed and they're starting to get some of that down. Um, you can find goldfinches picking out some of that down in order to build their nest. So pretty common sight right now. So the goldfinches are definitely out and they are nesting right now. And if you are looking to attract them to your backyard, of course, the best way to do that is with Niger seed. So um, you can do just straight Niger seed. We have a blend called Finch Favorite, which is Niger seed mixed with sunflower hearts that are ground up that they absolutely love. They love the sunflower hearts and I've been getting um, downy woodpeckers coming to it. Um, chickadees are coming to it quite often. So it's been giving me a bigger diversity of birds than just the Niger usually does alone. So um, soon we'll be seeing signs of young goldfinches out there and there are other baby birds out there right now. So I thought I'd show you what some of the other baby birds look like right now that are out and about. So usually once a bird has fledged, so we were just talking about goldfinches and they'll leave the nest, you know, anywhere between uh, 11 and 14 days after hatching. And then they don't, they're not flying around right away. Usually they'll spend a few days on the ground, hopping around, getting to know the world around them, the parents, even after the young have fledged and when they're on the ground exploring their little world, the parents will still come and visit them. They'll still feed them on the ground. So that is totally normal. So now, and uh, you know, during the, the late spring through the summer is the time where you might see some of these baby birds on the ground. And that's totally fine. That's very, very normal. And so you don't want to necessarily move them because the parents are still feeding them. So as long as they don't look injured or anything like that, they are totally fine. So you just want to leave them be. So I love this little chart here showing what some of the young birds look like that have just left the nest and this says, don't bird nap us. <laughs> so um, they, they definitely will look different. Their feathers aren't all the way grown in. Um, in the top left hand corner here, this Northern Mockingbird has funny feathers that are sticking out of its head. So that's pretty common too. So I'll show you what some of these fledglings look like, but it's totally normal to find them on the ground. So don't be surprised if you do see some of those. So um, last week I was out and about and hiking and in the grass, I 
came across one myself. So this was a little bird that was just um, in the grass. I'm not totally sure what kind of bird it is. I think it could be a chipping sparrow um, because when I, before I got to this little guy who was very well hidden in the grass, um, I did see a little chipping sparrow fly away from it. So it could be a, chip, a young chipping sparrow would be my guess, um, but I'm not totally sure. So um, I came across this little guy myself just the other day. Um, but you're going to start to see some other young birds in your backyard. You've probably seen young house sparrows. They can have two or three broods a year. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they can have more than three broods a year because they start so early and go pretty late in the season. Um, but you've probably seen these young ones at your feeder. They'll flap their wings. They'll beg their parents for food. And uh, they're really, really common, at least in my backyard right now. I have tons of young house sparrows. And then there's morning doves. And morning doves you can find on the ground normally. They tend to feed off the ground anyway. Um, but don't be surprised if you see some young ones. They have really, really good camouflage, but they might just hunker down right underneath your feeders or underneath some kind of shrubs if you've got them in your backyard. So definitely lots of young morning doves out there right now. Here's another picture of a young morning dove. You can see some of its camouflage there. Um, robins are pretty, uh, are, are pretty active right now. They can have two to three broods a year. So you can see throughout the summer, Lots of young robins out there. This is a picture of a young robin. Um, they usually won't have the same bright coloration as the parents right away, uh, but they're usually about the same size once they leave the nest. They tend to be about the same size as the parent. They're just feathers tend to be uh, not as grown in. But here's what a young robin looks like. And here's another version of the robin here. So really speckled at first when they first leave the nest. Um, here is a picture sent in by Chris of some robins, a um, little robin in a nest here about to fledge after being born about two weeks ago after hatching out of their eggs. So here's some little robins there. And this is from last year, sent in by Chris, who says the first robin has flown the coop this morning. And that was on July 31st, so almost exactly one year ago, um, uh, Chris had robins leaving the nest. So don't be surprised if you do see some robins out there. If you're trying to give robins a leg up and you want to feed them something, they're really not the kind of bird that will come to a feeder. They definitely come to bird baths. So if you want to give them something to entice them, a bird bath is great. Uh, but mealworms, they will eat mealworms. So even if you sprinkle live mealworms on the ground underneath your feeders, or again, you know, if you've got shrubs that the birds tend to hunker down by. Um, you can absolutely put live mealworms on the ground. That's what they prefer. You can also do freeze-dried mealworms as well, um, but the live is really what they prefer, and you can get um, robins coming to that. Um, they might come to a tray feeder if you do one of those hanging trays where you can throw anything in there. You might get some robins if you put mealworms in there, but your best bet is going to be to put them on the ground because that's where they normally will eat from. Um, blue jays are pretty funny. Once They've left the nest. They're pretty cute. Their, their feathers are, are pretty short and stumpy, and they don't have that full crest developed yet. So um, because the blue jays are so big and they are pretty colorful, you might see them more often on the ground just because they're, they're more brightly colored, but they are definitely out. Um, and then there are bluebirds as well, if you're lucky enough to get bluebirds. Their young are out there. They can have anywhere between one and three broods a year. And so they're on their second or third brood right now. And the young will usually stick around their parents for the, the rest of the season. And they'll even help raise the youngsters that, uh, that, that keep coming. So if, if you've got some bluebirds from your first brood, don't be surprised if they stick around and help raise the young from the second and third brood. So they tend to do that before dispersing from their, their family unit. So definitely lots of bluebirds out there. Um, here's what a Eastern towhee fledgling looks like. So you can start to see some of the characteristics that it shares with its parents. It's got that long tail, that dark colored tail. Um, you can see a little bit of the kind of chestnut or rufous colored sides there. Um, so this is this was sent in last year by Bob who said, heard an Eastern towhee singing and singing close by, but was surprised to see a young Eastern towhee. There were a few around and dad was keeping a close eye on them. So. 
different fledglings out there right now. And the cowbirds are another bird you might see. If you happen to see a small bird feeding a much larger bird, that's going to be a cowbird most of the time. Um, cowbirds are nest parasites, meaning that they lay their eggs in the nests of other birds. So those other birds um, usually aren't wise to that and will lay on, will sit on the egg, they'll incubate it, and then they will feed that nestling. Um, so sometimes you can have a much smaller bird, like a warbler, or in this photo, a chipping sparrow, um, taking care of that much larger cowbird. So that's kind of an interesting phenomenon that happens. So keep an eye out for that as well. Here's another picture of it. You can kind of see better just how much bigger the cowbird is from that little chipping sparrow. So pretty fun, pretty funny, uh, funny uh, picture there of the chipping sparrow with the cowbird. Um, cardinals. Cardinals can have one or two broods a year. They're young once they've left the nest can again be kind of disheveled. They don't have their full crest. Their feathers are kind of short. They tend to have the same kind of coloration as the female early on, but then they'll start to get redder and redder. Their beaks are usually a grayish blackish color at first as well um, before they turn bright orange. So cardinal babies are definitely out there. And you might even see the parents feeding the, the young too. That's kind of a common sight in backyards uh, where the, the parents will grab some food from your feeders and then fly out to the young and, and feed them. So if you're looking to see that kind of activity, you wanna make sure you've got some seed out there that the cardinals love, which is gonna be anything with black oil, sunflower in it, safflower seed, that is ideal for these birdies. Um, some photos sent in by you guys. Here's some photos sent in by Bob, who says some of the youngsters hanging around the yard. So he's got some young tufted titmouse. So speaking of birds feeding one another and feeding their young, it looks like the young one here has been flapping its wings, begging for some food. And here is the parent um, giving them a little beak full of some food. This I think is a young, European starling, I want to say. Um, couldn't totally tell from the photo, but there's another young bird out there and a, another picture here of a fly catcher, a little fledgling fly catcher, um, a nuthatch. So here's a young nuthatch exploring its tree. And then here's a woodpecker as well. It looks like it could be, it's either a northern flicker or a uh, red-bellied woodpecker. It can be tough to tell when they don't have all their coloration. Um, can't totally tell from this picture which one it is, but here is what a young uh, red-bellied woodpecker looks like here. They don't have that coloration yet on the back of their head. They're very, very gray. So that's my guess about what this photo I think is here. It's hard to tell, um, but it almost looks like it might have a little bit of a marking on its face like a flicker has. So some young woodpeckers out there as well. And here's some more photos sent in by Bob. He says some recent photos from the past week or so. Here is a hummingbird going after some thistle seeds. So not so if you do happen to have thistle around your yard. Uh, keep an eye out for hummingbirds too. You might have the hummingbirds coming to the blooms and then once it goes to seed and you're getting that plant down, look for the goldfinches coming to it to build their nest. Uh, a blue-winged warbler. So normally we talk a lot about warblers in the early spring and we don't see too many of them as we go on into the summer months, at least not the big diversity that we usually see early in the spring. Um, you'll probably find and if you go out anywhere, you can find yellow warbler, you can find common yellow throat. They both not only are here all summer, but they sing a lot, so they're easy to find. Um, but here's a blue winged warbler. So that's a pretty cool sighting um, of another bird that Bob saw probably in his yard. Um, and then some cedar waxwings here. And cedar waxwings you can find if you have any kind of bush or tree that has any berries that come out. Um, cedar waxwings absolutely love that. They tend to flock together and they will eat a ton of berries off the trees and then fly on to their next location. Here's a picture of a swallowtail. So we're definitely in the height of butterfly time where if you've been doing butterfly gardening, you might be getting rewarded by getting some different butterflies in your garden. And here's a swallowtail 
photo sent in by Lynn. Probably a black swallowtail, but it's hard to tell. Could also be um, a spice bush swallowtail. It's hard to see the little piece of its wing here that would um, that would decipher which one it is is covered up there. But it's um, if it's red with a little polka dot in the middle, then it's a black swallowtail. So that's probably what it is. That's going to be the, the more common of the two in backyards. And it's monarch butterfly season. So again, curious if anybody has seen any monarchs in their backyard. It seems to be kind of a sparse season for them. Um, one thing you can look for is, of course, the monarchs flying around, but you can also look for them on milkweed. And you might find other creatures on your milkweed as well, like these caterpillars here. These are called milkweed milkweed tussock moths and you're going to tend to have not just one on your milkweed but a whole bunch so they definitely like to congregate all together so whereas the monarch butterfly tends to lay one egg per milkweed plant the milkweed tussock moth will do multiple eggs per plant so if you see really fuzzy caterpillars on your milkweed. It's probably going to be these milkweed tussock moths. They're pretty neat looking. They're uh, black and white and bright orange. So really neat uh, moth uh, caterpillar there. So keep an eye out for, their, for them. One way to tell if you have caterpillars around is by the, the remains that they leave behind. Um, there's a fancy word for caterpillar poop. It's called frass. And um, so one really easy way to tell if you have caterpillars is a course, you can look to see if there's any kind of um, chew marks or holes in the leaves. Uh, but if you're out hiking and you're trying to scout for some caterpillars, look for the frass because um, they, they definitely, as they're eating, it comes in one end and out the other quite, uh, in quite large amounts. So if you've ever raised caterpillars indoors, you will have experienced that. So that's one way you can tell where all the caterpillars are. Um, last weekend, I set up a sheet. I've talked about this before, setting up, you know, just a, a white sheet with lights on it to see what kind of moths and insects can be attracted. I've been really trying to, to get some um, of the giant silk moths. I really wanted to see some of those. I have been unsuccessful in that, but some pretty neat and different insects came to the party here when I turned on those lights. Um, the first that I thought was pretty cool. This is called a fish fly or a Dobson fly. Um, you can find these guys by water a lot of the time because that's where they will lay their eggs. That's where their larvae develop. So this was a really big insect that was attracted to the lights there. Also got a nice slender meadow Katie did. Um, a caddis fly. This is another type of insect that will lay its eggs in water. So you can find them around water. Um, this is a marsh fly with really beautiful speckled patterned wings there. Um, this was probably the most interesting moth that I was able to get. I first I thought it was a firefly, but it turns out it is a painted lichen moth. So some pretty neat and different stuff um, that came. So no giant moths, but still a pretty neat and different diversity of insects that were out there. Some other insects that I've seen lately are is this uh, net winged beetle which was pretty neat, bright orange and black, as well as this soldier beetle that was crawling around on some dead wood. So uh, not only are there lots of birds out there right now, but definitely lots of bugs. If you see one and you're not sure what it is, uh, you can of course get an insect guide. There's a great app that'll help you identify them called Picture Insect. Um, so that's been helpful for me if you're out somewhere and you really wanna know right away what kind of bugs you're seeing. That's fantastic if you don't have your field guide right on you. Um, and then let's see if this works, this video here. Um, just as I was wrapping up and about to shut off the lights when I had my, my lights on the, the sheet there, attracting some insects, a toad came to the party to, to hang out. And uh, oh, good, it does work. So you can see the toad started to uh, to go after all of the different insects that were on the sheet. So I mean, you, know, you might get more than just bugs if you do this kind of thing. So you never know what kind of things you might see uh, out there. 
If you have any questions, you can put those in the comments. Again, I'd love to know what kind of things you guys are seeing in your yard um, or out hiking, wherever you may be. So um, it's time, says goldfinch are the reason I started bird watching. Yeah, there's usually, most people have one bird that actually really piques their interest and got them on this hobby. And I'm not surprised that that was the goldfinch for you. They're just a really beautiful bird. Um, she also says in Tennessee, I have house finch, Carolina chickadee, red-bellied woodpecker, downy woodpecker, hummingbird. I still have a goldfinch show up from time to time. Yeah, so down, uh, so further down south, we have here in New York, the black-capped chickadee. And if you go further south, there's the Carolina chickadee. They look super, super similar to the black-capped chickadee that we have here. Uh, Whistles to Animals says, thanks for another presentation. Sometimes it's hard to feed slash attract goldfinches because of the introduced house finches push them off feeders. Yeah, sometimes sparrows and other birds can be more pushy at feeders and will scare the goldfinches away. There are special feeders you can get that attract goldfinches, but will keep birds like house sparrows or even the house finches off. They're called upside down niger feeders and so the feeding ports are actually below the perches so the goldfinches have to flip over upside down in order to feed and so the goldfinches can do that but house sparrows can't house finches can't um, chickadees can so chickadees can also use that type of feeder so that's one thing you can do if you're trying to attract goldfinches but you don't want some of those other birds coming to the feeder um, Randy's on. He says, hi, everybody. Stephanie is on. She said, I saw lots of sparrow fledglings in my magnolia tree this morning with parents fetching neat treat seed from my feeders and bringing it to their fluffy young ones, handing off from beak to beak. It was so sweet to watch. So Stephanie is seeing some of that behavior of the adults feeding the young. And that has a special name too, actually. It's called aloe feeding. Um, and you'll sometimes see that happening during mating season as well. Like, uh, when the male is trying to attract a female, um, they'll sometimes come to a feeder together and the male will feed the female. So there's a picture here that Bob sent in of the tufted titmouse doing this same thing. Um, it's time also says, I have two morning doves, Robin Cardinal, Blue Jay, Eastern Bluebird in the area, but don't come to my balcony. Yeah, eastern bluebirds like a very specific habitat, so it's not too surprising that they don't come to a balcony. They do like wide open spaces, um, like open fields and that kind of thing. So this is that is their preferred habitat. Here's some eastern bluebirds right here. Uh, Bob Azani says, good morning, everyone. I've been really enjoying watching young tufted titmice in, including the parents, there must be seven to eight around constantly. The young are so inquisitive, investigating every nook and cranny of the yard and every feeder. The young house wrens are also still hanging around, but spend much of their time on the ground. So, Bob, some, oh, it sounds like a lot of tufted tip mice around. I wonder if it's more than one nest, or that could be just a very successful one nest of tufted titmice and they are cavity nesters so they will nest in hollow trees or you can get a birdhouse for the tufted titmouse they're in this actually in the same family as chickadees so they tend to um, like the same kind of things as far as nesting and um, and food so they love the peanuts they love the um, sunflower hearts the tufted titmouse if you're looking for a house for them they do require a house that has a bigger hole though than say a chickadee house so they do like one that i believe is like two inches in diameter as far as their opening goes um, so they do require something a little bit bigger than the chickadees do um, Bob also says, I believe that was the gross beak, if I remember correctly, on the top of the tree you thought was a starling. Oh, okay, perfect. Here we go. Um, the other was a young red-bellied woodpecker at the top of the tree. The brown bird was a young eastern phoebe. Oh, and I've been seeing monarchs every day multiple times a day. Also saw a marble black and white butterfly, which was a first for me. So Bob's having some good luck again with um, different birds and butterflies in his yard. Um, Randy says, good morning, Bob, great photos. Stephanie says, I've only seen one butterfly in my yard so far, so far this summer and it was a black swallowtail, no monarchs yet. Yep, 
I am right there with you. I've only been getting the cabbage white butterflies in my yard so far, at least that I've seen. So um, Susan says we saw a monarch uh, flitting around some milkweed on the canal. All right. So Susan has seen a monarch butterfly. Lynn is on. She says, good morning. Made it down to Amanda's garden yesterday. Picked up a few butterfly, hummingbird, and oriole plants. What a lovely place. Yes. And actually, I think they have an event possibly going on this weekend. Um, Amanda's garden is a native nursery and it's a wonderful place to get plants. I've had such good luck with the plants I've gotten from them. And um, one of my favorites, one of my favorite plants totally in my backyard I got from them was New York ironweed. I got it as, you know, little, little plant. And after a few years, it has seriously taken off. It's got to be like seven or eight feet tall now. It's just gorgeous and it's just about to bloom. So really exciting stuff. But yeah, if you're looking for any kind of native plants, things for pollinators, Amanda's Garden is the place to go. They specialize in natives. So that's what they sell exclusively. So, um, and I do believe that they have an event going on this weekend. I want to say I got an email about it. So they do have a website you can look up um, to check that kind of thing, but definitely love that place. Ellen says, hi Liz, thank you always for all the information you share week after week. A pileated woodpecker spent the day at my feeder yesterday. So fun. So Ellen has a pileated woodpecker, which is stopping by. Um, Bob says, do yellow warblers have a pinkish beak? Most I've seen uh, most I've seen seem to be dark. I have photos of a bright yellow bird that I swore was a yellow warbler, but the beak throws me off. Maybe a juvenile, very bright yellow and no striping. I'll have to share photos. Yeah, I'm not totally sure because any time I've seen them, they do have a dark colored beak. Here's a picture of the yellow warbler. For my Birds of New York book here to show y'all what it looks like, but it could be a juvenile. Yeah, their juvenile might have a pink beak. I'll have to look in the Crosley ID book to see. The only other bird I can think of that's yellow with maybe a pinkish beak would be a, uh, a female scarlet tanager, but um, they're, they're bigger than the yellow warbler would be. So yeah, I'm curious if you share those photos, um, we'll share them on our Facebook page and we can all take a look to see what they are. Susan says, also had a couple red winged blackbirds on my feeder. All right. So she also has some red-winged blackbirds coming. So it sounds like you guys all have a pretty good diversity of different things showing up in the yard, which is fun. Um, that is everything we have to share with you today. We'll be back on Tuesday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.